Well, good morning and welcome uh, to another edition of The Morning Devotional. My name is Pastor William Hill. I am the pastor of Providence Church, a congregation of the Presbyterian Church in America. Today is Tuesday, November 24th, 2020. This is edition number 35. We are in season two of The Morning Devotional. We are considering Matthew chapter five, verses 43 to 48 this morning as we are working our way through the Sermon on the Mount. Let's pray together and then we'll continue in this section that we began uh, just yesterday. Let's pray. Father, as we now come to your word on another morning in which you have given to us that we might serve you, we pray that your spirit would burn these, these things into our hearts and our minds. We pray, Lord, that we as your people would emulate the great love in which you demonstrated in Jesus Christ. We pray that you'd help us, that you might open our ears, our eyes, and our minds, and our hearts to these matters. We pray for your people. We pray for those who are struggling, some having uh, serious medical issues, some having relational or financial issues. We pray for your church, that you might prosper her, and that she might rise up and bless you and praise your name. We pray that your people this day would do your will, even as the angels do in heaven. We commit this time to you, Lord, and ask that you would be gracious to us now for Christ's sake. Amen. Let me read Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 43, reading through verse 48. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. For he makes his sun rise on the evil and on the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And if you greet only your brothers, what more are you doing than others? Do not even the Gentiles do the same? You therefore must be perfect, as your heavenly Father is perfect. Now yesterday we considered the concept and the issue uh, relating back to the Old Testament law in Leviticus 19 as to this uh, command that undergirds the entire Bible. It should, has been argued, and I agree, that love is indeed the quintessential characteristic of the Christian life, love itself. And we know from uh, Paul's writings in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 that love is indeed that very thing. It is the central characteristic, the quintessential characteristic of the Christian. In other words, one cannot rightly say, I love Jesus, I love God, if they do not love others. And what's interesting about 1 Corinthians 13 is where it falls in the, uh, in the letter that Paul penned to that church at Corinth. He has just completed a discussion of spiritual gifts in chapter 12, and at the end of the chapter, he ends it with these words, and I will show you a still more excellent way. And then he goes on, 1 Corinthians 13, beginning with verse 4, love is patient and kind, love does not envy or boast, it is not arrogant or rude, it does not insist on its own way, it is not irritable or resentful, it does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. And then skipping down to verse 13, so now faith, hope, and love abide. But these three, but the greatest of these is love. And so as Paul sets these things before us and describes for us what love is, uh, we then are uh, exhorted by the Savior here in Matthew chapter uh, 5 uh, to love and love even our, our enemies. And so as we uh, considered yesterday, this object of our love is not merely our friends and our family and those who think like us, talk like us, act like us, but it's also those who are our enemies. And Jesus deals with this very pointedly here in verse 44, but I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. Now, here he gives to us very tangible expression of how we might love. It's not the only thing that we can do or the only thing we should do. But it certainly begins there with the issue of prayer. Praying for those who, um, who 
give us grief in this life. In a parallel account in Luke chapter 6, beginning in verse 27, we read, But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. And so here very clearly in, in the Luke account, of the, uh, we have some very tangible aspects of how this love works itself out in the Christian life. Again, it's not the only thing, but it's certainly uh, the principle by which the Savior sets down for us. He tells us in Luke's account to do good to those who hate you, to go out of your way uh, to be kind and courteous to those who especially give you trouble in this life. And the Apostle Paul, he, he tells us uh, this in his, his letter uh, in chapter 12 in, of Romans. He says, beginning in verse 18, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. To the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him something to drink. Now there, we have some very tangible ways in which we can demonstrate love. And it's interesting how Paul appeals to the very uh, core of our existence. Uh, water, food, and drink are necessities of life. Without them, we cannot live. And so you are, by doing these good deeds uh, to your enemy, you are expressing indeed the greatest love uh, that man has ever known, and that is the Father's love for his people. And so there's some tangible ways, but there are many other things, brothers and sisters, that we can do, uh, especially for our enemies. But for anybody, uh, we can uh, serve them as we no take note of our neighborhood and our community and people who are unable to do certain things. We live in a very difficult time with this COVID virus and all the discussion about that. And I'm not here to uh, express my opinions one way or the other on that. But there are people who are housebound, who are afraid to go to the store. And maybe you know people like that. And you can ask them if you, you can serve them in that way by, by picking up some food at the grocery store, by doing simple acts of kindness to others, especially our enemies, but to anybody who has a need uh, for these very things. And so Jesus tells us to do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. Uh, how often do you consider those who are difficult in your life and, and then turn that into opportunity for prayer? What, do you sh what should you pray? Well, you should pray that the gospel would, would um, uh, penetrate their hearts. Uh, that is the solution to their opposition of you, that they might become a family member, that they might be adopted by God into his family room thus becoming your brother or sister in the Lord. And so you pray for them. You pray for their well-being. You pray for the gospel to come to their hearts. You pray that the Lord would open their eyes to the truth, the only truth, the only hope that man actually has. You pray for your own heart. You pray that you might not become bitter, that you might be loving and kind, and maybe even pray through 1 Corinthians 13 and ask the Lord to grant to you these descriptions of love, which is really, truly a description of the Lord Jesus Christ and his love uh, for you and for me. And so Jesus says that th this is important, it's vital, it's quintessential as, as it relates to the Christian life so that you may be sons of your Father who is in heaven. Now we take note of the what is often known as common grace element here. But what is important to note is that we love others because they are made in the image of God. And they do enjoy, at some, at some level, the very benefits of God, even if they hate God. Uh, they have a job. They have a house. They are driving a car. They have eaten breakfast this morning. Their grass grows. Uh, many different benefits come because they are creatures made in God's image, and they are enjoying His benevolence. But we love them because they are made in God's image. And James tells us as much in his letter as well, that we are to love those made in the very image of God. 
And of course, then he chastises those who say or who pretend that they have love for others, but they truly don't because they love their friends. They love those who are like them. They love those who don't trouble them. But that's what the world does. That's, that's easy, my friends. It's easy to love people who you get along with. It's so much more difficult to love those who are hard to love. And so that's why we need the Spirit's help. We need to be perfected by the Spirit in this area. And I suspect that most of us, dear, dare I say all of us, ought to consider these things more deeply and pray for help from the Spirit of God that we might love, that we might love our enemies even as we love our friends. My friends, if you say, I love, but you only love your friends, you don't know what love is. Again, as I said yesterday, as you love your enemies, you are exemplifying, you are demonstrating the very love of God from all eternity displayed in Jesus Christ and given uh, to you as, as ones who have received uh, the kindness, the love, the 1 Corinthians 13 love of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so may we all consider these things more, pray for more help, and then go and do these uh, things. I trust these times are a blessing for you. I hope they are. If you would like to contact me, you can do so. The information is there before you. So until tomorrow, when we continue through the Sermon on the Mount. May the Lord bless you and keep you today. And may he cause you to serve him with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength.